Hi, this is Douglas Engelbart and Brad Newberg with the Hyperscope Project, a National Science Foundation funded project to rebuild portions of Douglas Engelbart's groundbreaking augment system on the World Wide Web. We've instrumented Douglas Engelbart's system with a screen capturing software so we can watch him use the system as well as set up a Skype environment so we can communicate as we watch what he's doing. Thanks for joining us, Douglas. Oh, this a pleasure. So today, Douglas is going to use the system and so we can understand how an expert user uses Augment and learn more. So Douglas, if you could just, you know, well, it's, you know, there's so many kinds of work to do. And so what I just picked here is saying, oh, uh, let's study something that was put into the journal. And uh, this means give us slight introduction to what the journal is. And uh, it's a system within our Augment environment whereby you can submit to a, a journal system a given file and it assigns an integer number, serial number, and then it guarantees to keep that. You can recover it with that number anytime, and it's unchangeable, etc. So it's the equivalent of publishing, and it turns out to be a very interesting thing to publish kinds of reports, etc. And so every paper that we published out there started out as a journal item. And so what I have on the left-hand screen here is, oh, this is journal. It's the BI journal of the different journals we have. This one we call BI. And this particular article was the 2120th entry put into it. And it was done that October 24th, year 2000, at 1248 Pacific Daylight Time. And so this is, I'm looking at that file now. <clears throat> and this might be one way I would come in to see it with saying, show me just one line, first line of every paragraph. I'm using a narrow window, but that's all right. And I only want to see the first two levels that are in the file. And incidentally, turn on what we call the location numbers of each of these. So I say, okay, that, why do I look at it like this? Well, then I can see what might be interesting and go jump to it. So I say, well, what is this very first paragraph under the introduction? I'll just say, I want to jump to it and I mark and I click on it and then it asks for when we show it to you, when you jump to it, what view do you want? I'll say open it up all wide with with uh, no blank, with blank lines between it and then show it to me with just the things at that level with the left margin moved way over and oh before I do it, why don't I move the cursor over to the other window so this is where I'll see it. Oh that's okay. So I click on it here, and this is where I see it. Just, so. to, just to let people know, unfortunately, with the screen capturing software, we don't see Douglas's mouse pointer. So this is one thing to keep in mind as we work. Yes. All right. Good deal. Thank you. Anyway, so <clears throat> these are the first two this content of the uh, introduction. And uh, so this is a very uh, interesting thing to just... Here we're trying to introduce this hyperscope idea, and uh, we start out by saying the large-scale challenges, large-scale challenges are best served if they're an appropriately scaled strategic principle to guide their pursuit. Mm -hmm. So this sort of concepts of scaled strategic principles is a very basic thing to all the years in which Augment has been evolved, and so. It takes a little while then to unfold it to people because it, it was looking at what we're after in the end is to how do you really boost the collective capability of large groups of people to, to get an understanding among them and be able to understand complex, urgent problems and be able to understand what the solutions could be and understand the resources that are available and then be able to commit and as you walk, you know, go through this solution approach, how you keep track of the situation, understand it enough to know when you're in trouble or know how to cure it. So understanding at many levels among large crowds of people are just a basic challenge. So anyway, we're saying this, and uh, this 
this sort of pervasive challenge in the second paragraph. So this is just to say this this document was published in uh, the year 2000, and the term hyperscope was brought into it. And we could just say, well, we'd like to learn a little more about it. Well, I'll jump then to this item number two, and this time I'll just go to it. And and so we're looking at the first level and two. Now we're looking at some of the whole full paragraphs underneath it. And this sort of gives us a feeling how we if we wanted to could read through the whole thing. So I see the first paragraph to a special note that uh, all this thing is planned to do open source. Well, open source development is just key to the kind of planning this large strategic thing is that what's going to be evolving in this form is the equivalent of a natural language. You know, it's just more and more concepts, the way they fit together, how you're going to do it. And uh, uh, it, it says, well, if, if, if it were that somebody could come in and start patenting the different verbs and nouns, it'd just be a very clumsy way to try to evolve in the way natural languages have. So this is where it goes. So this was the introduction to, if we're going to launch the pursuit of what we call our open hyper, open hyper document project. <laughs> So this hyperscope was a way to get that started, legacy systems, and that's strategically brought through. And so what is it? We'd say, all right, I'm going to jump and see what paragraph 2B is like. So I click on it down there, and I say, before I'm going to go, that well, I, I look up to see my view specs, and I say, oh, that's right. So it will position that at the top of the screen and fit it over the left one of the viewing specs of like that, and just say, oh, the hyperscope's going to be a lightly modified web browser supported by an intermediary processor. Oh, that intermediary processor operates between the browser and the files or databases holding the existing working knowledge of a collaborative community. So the hyperscope is not an editor. So anyway, a hyperscope user will be able to follow links, et cetera, into and between his legacy files in a manner similar to using a browser with web-based HTML files. And more, there will be numerous new capabilities and features which will give a hyperscope user considerable more flexibility and working power than users limited to standard browsers and legacy editors. Oh, that's interesting. Well, let's just go say, uh, what kind of things do we expect to see in there? Well, now we might want to start looking at the outline on the left-hand window. So I want to jump to it, and oh, it unfolds new. So I'm saying, oh, these are the first lines of each of the paragraphs, so I can sort of get an idea of what it's like. And so I see, oh, that's great. And But I know I'd have to dig down in between. And in that case, what's this? OS or user's interface that they're talking about here. So I'll just jump to it in the right-hand window and see it. So I don't expect people to follow this and read all this carefully or something, but this is an example. And we say, okay, now what if I see this and I'd like to, to change it like this? I, uh, I say, uh, um, well, let's see if I'd like to uh, replace this word with uh, capability. This is the, normally the way I would do it. I type capability in the top and I say, I'm going to replace this word with what I just typed in. We'll do it. And it says, oops, you can't modify and turn. Oh, that really is right. It's, when you're looking at it this way, you can't. I said, well, what could I do? Oh, let me jump to a I know there's a file I call V, just for the heck of it, and uh, temporary usage. And, uh, oh, hey, look, let's just say we could uh, we could copy this. Why don't we copy this whole branch that's here? What does branch mean? That means item two. Branch three, I mean, has all these others, the A, B, C, D, F, G, right on to that. That's a whole branch in my structure. I said copy that branch. And I could copy over here, see, and bring it to there and, and drop down a level. And, uh, oh, hey, look, now it's got new numbers because it's the one all by itself. 
oh, hey, now I can edit it. In fact, that one gets so I can say, oh, let's just look at all that by itself and say, now if I'd like to edit it, I can. Well, in the first place, this, I know that I've been bothered by it. Paragraph, th the third one here, 1C and 1A, they need to, they bear, I, I didn't want them like that. I wanted to transpose them. So I say transpose these two statements, which really is our way of saying interchange them, see? And you say, okay, do it. And it, bingo, and interchange them. Well, that's just one of the verbs that we've evolved after the years. We can say, transpose word too if we want we could say transpose word transpose the archiving with the evolving here see okay do it so they just are in change see, we can transpose phrases this whole this whole thing that goes up to this phrase we want to transpose that with this one here and it'll do it and then we says oh we need uh, hey, this way, knock that out, and this uppercase, this, this uh, uppercase, this word, and uh, uh, flexibility, and and uh, for us this way, the, the, oh, well, we can say we can just we can replace that character with lowercase b if we want to. There's all sorts of ways to do it. And um, so what happened? Oh, we better move that period down here. We say move character, click, click, and uh, it moves character. So this is showing you just a little bit about the kind of control or command language that it's all, a whole bunch of verbs and nouns. So he says, oh, what are the verbs that are there? Well, I can hit a question mark and it'll, oh, can you see that? No, I'm sorry, the way this work, the way that, We've got the window set. <laughs> oh, I can see it. It's coming down. Oh, can you? Uh-huh. Then you see something different from what I do. So, well, tell me what you see. It's, um, it's, it's showing all the commands. No kidding. Well, that's very interesting because I have to slide way up here to see them. Yeah, it's weird. It's overlaying them on top of the bottom two windows. Oh, oh, oh. That's... that's that's the problem with this way we got. Okay, so suppose we skip that right now. <laughs> but at any given time, I can see all the different verbs and nouns. So it says that I've got, I say I can, uh, I can delete. Yes, I can delete. What kind of things can I delete? I can say, well, I can delete a character, or I can delete a word, or I can delete a phrase, a uh, phrase, Doug, what's the difference between a phrase and text? Because a seeing... phrase is any sequence of visible characters. See? So I just need to hit, you see provision over here? Oh, it'll pull the whole word out. Yeah, the visible strings, which words and things with periods. So phrase would be this whole string of visibles. Nice. And yes, you could say text, which you have to be a lot more exact about being able to designate which characters. How do you, I've had trouble putting something at the beginning of a line before something else. How do you do yeah. that? Like if you wanted to put a word before integrated. Oh, insert front. Ah, okay. Yeah. Cool. I didn't know about that. Nice. And that will go in if, if I don't hit a space, it will be right in front of the word. Mm -hmm. Like that. So you should, what I'd want to say is I want to insert, insert in front of it. Uh, I have to hit YY in a space to oh, gotcha. get it to be like that. And I can cancel it out. Oh, I can say I want to delete from there where? To the, um, uh, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah, no. So I would say delete text. There are, there are more subtle ways I can do some of those things, but it might take some explanation. Um, are there any questions here from the audience? Um, 
can you can you show submitting a document to the journal? Oh, that's a, that's a longer process. So. Yeah. Is there are there any open journals? Oh, there we have two main ones that we've been using, and there are five or six others, maybe more that the different customer groups that we're using it over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, each could have one or more journals established for them. And uh, so we, uh, the, the very first one was what we call uh, the Ogden Journal. Mm -hmm. And uh, for all the others, you have to type in the name of the journal in front of it. But if you put type in any name, just a number, mm -hmm. it'll go to the Ogden Journal. And uh, uh, I didn't know that. That's that's a default journal. Yeah, it was just the very first one. Um, uh, see, offhand, I can't think of any numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're pretty long numbers. Yeah, it's up to you know ten or fifteen thousand, ten or twenty thousand or more. Uh, see, yeah, boy, see. I could, if I wanted to, get some indirect, indirect things and um, and go to a, have some of them have a shorthand way to going to a journal mm -hmm. or going to any place. And um, do you mean using the, the macro that you showed me last time, or you mean actually? Um, oh, so you've got this file named X. Oh, your index file. So what is that? X is a special file you've created, right? Yeah. That has sort of a list of, would you call that, is that similar to kind of your bookmarks? Is that kind of your, kind of a listing of all your stuff? Um, or what is X? What do you, what do you keep in here? Um, let's just see. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> no, that's not the file. Um, uh, So what, what Douglas just used there was a macro called jump to indirect. Is that right? Right. That allows you to quickly jump to a named item that then leads to another file, kind of like a linked database to a certain extent. Is that right? right? Is that right? So what it does when I say uh, JL, then then if I hit GLF. Oh, this is a new one. So this is another macro called JP. What is What does this one do? No, sorry. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so I just remember, oh, phone this family. So I type WLF, and then when I execute what that macro does is jump link on, on the jump to the link that's here in this file on a statement named GLF. So it jumps to this particular link that you're seeing right right here. It's, it jumps to this, this point, the dot. The period says, okay, jump here, and then with a view stack of, hey, whatever level this is, B says add one more level, G says only look at the notes below this one, T says one line each, Y says right find the them, and O says, hey, turn on my inclusion right. feature. Can you, so, uh, sorry, the, the, the capital O, uh, that you, you using include links, do you have an include link in there? I'd love to see one. I've been trying oh, to get this. I'll show you. See, then if I say change the view spec from O to P. Nice. And uh, um, it'll be done this way too. Minus is slow. And actually what's written underneath this PLF branch are these statements that just say include. Do you, do you mind turning on statement numberings? I just want to see if those are independent statements. Ah, so those are. So it's way down deep in there. So those are to know. And uh, just, I think sometimes confusing for people to see those numbers, get the numbers there. So, wow. That's so sophisticated it. though, because you're actually saying include what's at this link, but you're actually doing indirect linking in there. You're saying go over. No, to, when I jump to link up here, uh -huh. And that's what the JI at PLF would jump to this 
jump here to this statement and say jump on that link. And that link says, okay, go to this particular position where you are. Uh -huh. And EBGTY would be this particular thing, watch it's DNL, except adding the O, a protest O to it, says, oh, actually invoke each of these inclusions. Oh, no, no, I mean the, um, the includes are very sophisticated because you're, you're saying include this link, but that link actually goes over to G, oh, goes over to HPH, right. finds and the first true. link, and then follows no. it. No, or, it goes to HPH uh -huh. and goes to a node that's name is GE, uh. and then takes, takes that link. Well, can, can you jump to that link? Can I, what do you, what's there? So that's going to go to my HPH file, and look where it goes to is the phone listing for when it's daughter Garrett. So is GE the label? Can you turn on showing label names? No, GE is not that. GE is, is uh, down here. In order to just be more efficient instead of typing middle bar, which there are four or five in this list, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a uh, uh, we'll find something named GE. Well, I put that down here. Those are initials. And so if I go to GE and take link that's there, now if they dot you, it'll jump up to the next node above it, which is this one. Nice. So it's just an indirect shortcut for me that I go to this file that has my home phone number and things in it, and I want to go see what Garrett's address or number is or something. I know I could just say type your initial GE.L, and it goes to my GE and takes the link there if it's just this door. The level there. Do you, is that reasonably clear yet? It is, it is, but I'd love to see the label. So the label of that statement, because it looks like the label is GE. Is that right? Yeah. I right. don't don't know where the label is though. Oh, it's well, say show I name. I show the name members. And that one that says okay, if it was preceded by a null and terminated with a comma, then that word in there is going to be taken as the label of this node here. So if I jump to GE. Um, then, oh, come on. I didn't want to, how did we get frozen up? What's that? How did we get frozen? I'm trying to. Oh, is it frozen? All right. No, no. I'll, I'll, I'll just forgot. <laughs> So, so maybe. Okay, so here's here's the statement, and we'll just turn on the loopers again and then see, okay. Oh, each of those is a, oh, that's good. It's good that you just did that, because I didn't realize that each of those is a statement. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. So you put the label on its, as, a, as its own statement, and then the first link jumps up one to the actual um, address book entry. Yeah, so look up. So oh, that's awesome. Jump link on that and go ahead and do it. Wow. Mm -hmm. So why did you choose to, to do it there instead of doing it on 7A2C? Because there's several oh. angle parts? Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of angle parts. Yeah. Um, so I, I could have done it by if, if the list was trying to be fixed all the time, I could jump to it by the, the nth, nth node and a list that's family or something. See? But this is so much easier. And uh, if you want to jump to di.l, I'm pretty sure Diana's name, we usually call her Di. And uh, so I might as well guess it for me. Yeah, sure, I'll see. And look, C E is Christina, down here below. Nice. And uh, so those are just shortcuts that I have to use with my family. <laughs> oh, look at that. So that's great. Yeah, that's right. So in Christina, you have two labels. So you can oh, use... Oh, that, Chris, yeah. Nice. And, and then I see um, over in the Christina Engelbart, I see the um, CE comma. 
I'm sorry, the BI dash CE. Yeah. What 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 is that? What are you doing there? Well, when she when she sent this email, uh -huh. and I, if I go look at uh, my mail mail file and uh, uh, uh. ah, so what you just did there is you you jumped to your file name M, which is the special file you've made, and then you follow the first link in there. This is what you showed us last time. Yeah, which is how I just sort of like, nice. There, there you find it like this, and the list of links here are That's the right. consecutive files, so it's every month older. So if I say I want to jump to item, go to file M, and take the first link, that'll take me to T84. Such a cool trick. If I say 2L, oh, <laughs> 2L, that'll go to this. Nice. To this change for us for March, this would be for February, and T82 would be for January. So I, all I know is, you know, it's a second month ago on the well. <laughs> so what was I going to do for you? Oh, well, I just wanted to do a time check really quick. Just to let you know, we've got about five more minutes. Uh, uh -huh. I, I want to keep the, the screen sharing sessions to 30 minutes. Yeah. So it's easy for people to watch them. Um, okay. How about in the next five minutes, uh, if you show maybe a content analyzer on your address book? All right. Uh, or so, probably be better in my mail, maybe. Okay, yeah, uh, we're, that's great. Yeah, however you would use a content analyzer, that's even better. Yeah, the best place to use it. Does it there, like this. So, uh, there are all kinds of ways I do it in my uh, contact files and things like that. But it's even more so like this. So, uh, there's some, um, oh boy. Uh, 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 oh, well, this, uh, I'll say here, uh, only the first, all the first level statements in here, and you see a whole bunch of them, and I'll go away with the group, the gap, huh? I'll take away the one character gap, so I do this, so that's sort of a good way to look at there, and, uh, and AM, that's the files I've already already sent uh, out to people recently. And I'll say I want to jump there and open up the level. And uh, oh, these are the files I have sent, you know. And then I'll say, oh, I want to sort that flex out so that they, they nice. get there. So that's down to end date. Well, why, how do I know it's a date? Well, this. This sort of pattern, pattern thing for each of the mail branches. So what's underneath that it's the actual mail content itself. Douglas, just really quick. We're getting a little bit of, I think the network is causing a little bit of audio corruption. So, uh, so just talk a little slower. I think that might make it easier. Sure. Right. Thank you. Thanks. So anyway, you can see the content for every mail uh, item is... In the plex, as we call it, a bunch of items that are at the next level down from the mail header. 